Hi there folks, it's Alex from the Southern Ukulele Store and uh, as a filmist, we're just a few days off from Christmas 2020, the year that just kept on giving. And uh, yeah, we're pretty much there. I've just found enough time to make one more video to close out the year. And I decided to look at one of my favorite brands, a brand that I've been getting a lot of emails about this week, asking for sound samples of our current stock. And I thought, yeah, you know, it's just meant to be. So uh, I've come in a bit early today, hence why the video is a bit dark. It's still dark outside. And uh, today we're going to look at Cunalea tenor ukuleles. Now we're not going to focus on the entire series, but I do currently have uh, six different models in stock that all do something just a bit different uh, and will appeal to different people. So we're going to look at pretty much everything that I have available, going from a K1 up to a K2, a P1, a KSRT. We're going to look at the SUS T model, the popular SUS model, and finally we're going to look at the Monaco tenor. We're going to start with the K1, uh, let's begin. Okay, now the first ukulele we're going to look at today is the Canalea K1. The K1 is the original, it's the standard model by which other Canalea Hawaiian ukuleles build their name. It's simple, it's effective, it does everything right. So the K1 is all solid Hawaiian koa on the top, back and sides. This particular one is a premium K1. Canalea, as we've discussed in previous videos, they do their koa in four different uh, varieties slash flavors uh, slash styles so you have select koa which is less figured um, slightly more affordable then you have deluxe which is normally straight grain but very nicely figured koa then you have premium which has things like sapwood and really different pieces of koa very unique looking and then finally you have master grade now you don't see too many master grade k1s but we have had a few over the years the master grade koa is normally reserved for models like the platinum or uh, the diamond y you know the ones the ones that go upwards are two grand but for now we're looking at the k1 the k1 premium k1t which has a mahogany neck with an ebony fingerboard and bridge in 2018, Canalea changed the faceplate to ebony as well. So you have an ebony faceplate there with that Canalea logo in white mother of pearl. You have a pin bridge with ebony bridge pins and white mother of pearl dots up the neck. Now the neck on a Canalea is quite unique. It has a 38 mil nut width with a nice round neck that has just the slightest flat point on the back. So the neck feels quite deep if you're used to say a Carla or um, a Kai but as you move up to the high end you find more and more the Hawaiian brands have slightly thicker necks and I was asked in a comment just this morning uh, on YouTube what the difference between a 35 and a 38 mil nut width is for those that have never experienced both well a 35 mil nut width is normally more compact the string spacing is closer together that's the obvious answer the less obvious answer is that normally the necks are quite slender and round as well you do get anomalies, but generally a 35mm nut is an indicator of a slightly more compact neck. And the Hawaiian brands normally have a 38mm nut with a slightly deeper neck. There's not much else to say about the K1. The, the, the sound it makes does most of the talking. Uh, I don't think I mentioned the machine heads, which are Canalea branded gold open back tuners with black plastic buttons. But yeah, it's a gorgeous machine. Let's give the K1T Premium a play.
The second ukulele we're going to look at today is the Kanalea K2T. This is a deluxe model, so a K2T DLX, and uh, it's it's one of those great examples of how less is more. Despite being graded uh, down from the K1 we've just looked at, this has just as pretty color. The color on this is gorgeous, really quirky looking, with that really nice feature on the butt that goes all the way around. I know, really cool. Don't get to show you the bottom of the ukes very often, but when a piece of wood goes around like that, I can't help myself. And then the back here with uh, another one of those sapwood stripes down there. Just a really lovely piece of wood. Now the difference between a K1 and a K2 is uh, is cosmetic. The K2 has a sound hole rosette, which is um, a very thin um, three black, white, black rosette. And you have a tortoise, is it tortoise shell still? They did change it. So you have front ebony binding on this particular model. You still have the ebony fingerboard and bridge with the ebony bridge pins. 38 mil nut with a slightly chunkier neck and then those gold open back tuners with the white mother of pearl kind of their logo so the k2 typically runs about 10 percent more expensive than the k1 but it does have just a bit of bling to make it that bit more special if you if you want something that has some of the cosmetic details that personally i'm a sucker for that kind of thing and i'll always pay a bit more for it but yeah, you, know, you may hear both and think that the K1 is more for you. Let's give the K2T a play and see what you guys think. Okay, and the next ukulele we'll look at today will hopefully look familiar to some of you. This is the Kanalea SUST. Now you're thinking, SUS? That's you guys, and you're right. This ukulele is exclusive to the Southern Ukulele Store. It came about after a couple of years of back and forth with um, myself, Rob, and uh, Kaimana, Mika, and um, Joe Souza, where we talked about providing an alternative like an alternative ukulele for those that wanted something Hawaiian made that wasn't made of koa because as recently as four or five years ago that option just wasn't there without spending upwards of two three thousand pound and we really feel that this ukulele knocks it out of the park there were a few prototypes of different kinds of cedar before Kanalea settled on this Alaskan rainbow cedar which is this really gorgeous almost pencil stroke thin grained cedar top really straight grained lots of projection with a south american mahogany solid back and sides this is the same wood they use for their necks the south american mahogany and other than that the instrument has very little decoration we do make an sust deluxe which is uh something you might want to seek out on our website which is this model with uh, a big rosette and some binding a bit like a K2 version of the SUS model. You have those gold Canalea tuners, eventually when they zoom in, with the black buttons, a 38 mil nut width, ebony fingerboard and bridge with the ebony pin bridge. And yeah, the SUST is there for those that want uh, an instrument that has slightly 
it's had a bit more caffeine than Koa, if that makes sense. Koa is very sleepy, it's very bright, it's it's melodic. There's something just a bit more um, in your face about cedar in all the right ways. If you play finger style pieces, the cedar top may be more suitable for you anyway than the Koa, but it's just there as an alternative. And two or three years down the line now from when we first introduced it, I can't imagine a time where this ukulele wasn't here at SUS. It's just such a fantastic instrument and one that we're always proud to show off. So I'm gonna show you now the SUST. I'm gonna give it a play and see what you think. Next up today, folks, we have the Canalea P1T Deluxe. This is a Deluxe Koa Pineapple Tenor, in case you hadn't noticed from the obvious pineapple shape in front of you. So pineapple, the pineapple shape was first introduced by Canalea in 2019 on the Platinum model, and then formalized and kind of stripped down to create the P1 at the beginning of this year. We're right at the end of this year, so I should say last year. At the very beginning of 2020, at the NAM show, they introduced the P1. <laughs> um, the P1, similar to the K1, has a, a, an all Hawaiian koa body with a mahogany neck, ebony fingerboard and bridge, ebony bridge pins and an ebony bridge, with a different headstock decal. So you have the koa decal with the uh, pineapple um, special Canalea logo there inlaid but you still have those gold tuners. I really like the elongated headstock design of the P1. It's one of my favorite things about it. Some people, I think when they see the body, they get drawn instantly to that. But I love that this instrument is just a little bit longer to look at than most other tenors whilst not feeling or actually being any longer in the hands when you play. You have a satin neck with a gloss finish. All of these ukuleles are high gloss. I should have mentioned that. I'm really sorry, I forgot earlier in the video. But yeah, just the P1, a slightly deeper, slightly richer tone than the K1 and the K2 before it. I think we can all agree that there's nothing quite like a nice tight bo bottom. <laughs> I think we can all agree that there's nothing quite like a nice tight bottom end. This is the P1T Deluxe, let's give it a play.
Okay, and we're really moving up the range now. The next ukulele we're going to look at today is the Kanalea KSRT. This is a deluxe koa model, so solid Hawaiian koa, deluxe grade. Really, I mean, just shimmering koa. I really hope that comes across on camera as well as it comes across in the flesh. A really lovely piece of straight grained koa, just with all the quirkiness that you want. Really lovely wood. I, it has to be say, said that Kanalea really do have the best koa. Um, the Kamakas, are, they're very, very consistent, but quite plain looking unless you go for the deluxe model, uh, Koaloa, much the same, as much as I love both of those brands. If you want the prettiest Koa, that UV gloss finish with that high grade Koa, Kanalea, just do that so well. You have high gloss finish with a satin mahogany neck. The difference between the KSRT and the other models is first of all, this traditional slotted headstock, which is slimline, really compact stealth tuners i hope that's zooming in nicely for you there and the headstock depth is so slight and talked back quite a bit so what you get is just something that has all of the added angle of a slotted headstock whilst weighing next to nothing the design of this is perfect it's so good i love the design of this headstock and you also get a koa armrest which is really nicely mixed into the look of the instrument so when you're holding it you get the feel of, of the comfort edge but you're not let necessarily seeing it which uh, most of us agree is the best way to do it it's nice when you see them with big kind of bold paduk uh, wood contrasting the top and back but it's just as lovely when they're as subtle as this uh, the ksrt is one of canalea's most popular models uh, the KSRT is also the inspiration for the ukulele we're going to look at next, which is the Monaco. And for me, the KSRT represents a big step forward for Kanalea. Before this was introduced, we found that lots of people knew Kanalea. They loved the K1. Occasionally, people would like the K3. But the KSRT is just on the right side price-wise while offering a really deluxe instrument, something that's heirloom quality um, without being kind of three times the price of a standard model. So this is the KSRT, let's give it a play and see what you think. Okay folks, our last ukulele of the day is something that's causing quite a stir, something that many people are asking for more sound samples of. It's the Kanalea Monaco Tenor. Now the Kanalea Monaco Tenor is another collaboration exclusive to the Southern Ukulele Storm between us and Kanalea. It began this time last year. I was looking for a mango tenor of my own. I wanted something really premium and just did not see those options on the market. I spoke to my friend Kaimana Souza at Kanalea, and then during the first lockdown period this year, we sketched out what I was looking for. And essentially, this ukulele is a Kanalea KSRT with a few subtle and not so subtle differences. So the headstock is the same as the KSRT. It's a traditional Kanalea headstock. This one has a mango inlay in the logo with, hopefully you can see them now, with those very thin stealth tuners you still have the 38 mil nut width with the mahogany neck, the ebony fingerboard and bridge, but the mother of pearl uh, 
uh, inlays are replaced with mango inlays at the top side of the neck. And then there is a Monaco script at the bottom there. And then of course the body is this just gorgeous mango wood. And each one looks completely different to the last. We've selected the wood for each one. And you know, this is actually the last set of the first batch. So there will be a big gap now before we have more of these. But the last two that hopefully you can see now, <laughs> these arrived together. These were made at the same time. They are completely different to each other. And if you're asking why I personally was choosing Mango over Koa for a high-end ukulele, well, it's easily explained. Mango wood has something just completely different about it. So the the warmer frequencies stand out, so the C note, or if you're playing a low G, that low G stands out, but it doesn't become oversaturated like on mahogany. Likewise, it's not very, very bright like on koa. It's somewhere in the middle, and it's not very balanced, and the deeper tones, for me as uh, somebody that writes songs and plays uh, accompanying myself, I just loved that Mango had had the capacity to offer more of that lower octave range. It sounds just as lovely in high G, don't get me wrong, but I get asked regularly why I chose Mango and why I like Mango, and that's why. The other thing about it is it borrows the armrest idea from the KSRT, so it's hard to spot from a dis difference, uh, difference, hard to spot from a distance, but you do have the Mango armrest, so when you're leaning over, you just have maximum comfort, maximum performance, maximum fun, it's a treat for the eyes, a treat for the ears, uh, even smells good. You know the score. Uh, I'm going to give the Monaco T a play and see what you guys think. So there you have it folks, Kanalea Tenor Ukuleles, but which was your favorite? Please do let me know in the comments section if you have any questions, I will try and get back to you. Uh, probably not over the Christmas period, but you can also email me in store at alex at ukulele.co.uk or call us up 01202 430 uh, I'm gonna play this Monaco Tenor a bit more, but have a great Christmas and a happy new year and I'll see you in 2021.